Just when you thought the Harry Potter franchise couldn't get any more profitable, J.K. Rowling is now richer than Queen Elizabeth II, and all the Potter movies fall into the top 26 highest grossing films of all time. So what did they decide to do next? Uh, what if we told the story of the first four films again, but with little fingers made out of bricks? Well, TT Games loved the idea, and we got the multi-platform video game LEGO Harry Potter Years 1-4. to Let's have a gander at the DS version. Because this is a Lego game, you're going to have to watch the films it's based on before giving it a playthrough. All the cutscenes are going to seem a little strange as you won't have a clue what's going on. But come on, who hasn't seen the Harry Potter films? Thankfully, the channel Lego games are known for is abundant here, with some very funny characters. <laughs> One thing you should know, the DS version of Lego Harry Potter Years 1-4 is easily the worst in terms of storytelling. Most of the cutscenes here are shortened versions of the ones you'll see on home consoles, and one very strange addition is that the characters actually speak via text boxes. You'll notice that what most will say are direct quotes from the films. It's... stupid. If I wanted to experience lines from the movies, I'd watch the movies. Besides, Lego characters talking is like Tom and Jerry talking. It's just wrong. <laughs> The first thing you'll notice when playing this is that it does have touchscreen support and that it can still move around with the D-pad. This is something I would like to see on the Zelda DS games as moving around with the touchscreen is fine and well, but it's nice to have your hand out of the way at times. Speaking of Zelda, the game controls a lot like it. It has a similar point of view and the touchscreen controls are responsive for the most part. The means of this game is learning new spells and using them to advance throughout the four chapters. Your main spell is a simple projectile shooting spell, which you can use by dragging away from your character. All other spells in this game have you tapping on spell-enabled objects, and then following an on-screen stylus command. Incendio, the fire spell, requires you to draw a flame shape on the screen, Wingardium Leviosa, a simple curve, and Repairer, a circle. The Transfiguration spell puts you into a simple shape-connected minigame. All the spells feel good to use, but I think more spells to use in the game would have kept up the variety. Other moments in the game have you preparing potions by partaking in a Cookie Mama-esque minigame, although this is pretty lacklustre. There's also a character creation tool, but that again is pretty lacklustre. LEGO Harry Potter is probably the least combat heavy of the LEGO series. Sure, there's a few enemies, but most of the time, the aim of the game is to get from point A to point B and complete short minigames along the way with your stylus. This is a big letdown for me. When I think Harry Potter, I think Epic 1 duels and Quidditch, and unfortunately, this is what the game is seriously lacking of. Well, the official game of the Deathly Hallows movie is said to be a third-person shooter, so I may get my wish there. As for everything else, the game is pretty much standard LEGO insert movie title here, gameplay. You access levels from a base, collect studs of plenty and spend them on new characters and extras. You'll have a fair amount of time with this game, so as long as you're aiming for 100% completion. As far as how pleasing the gameplay is, it's pretty fun for a while. The touchscreen controls make LEGO Harry Potter at least worth playing on your DS, but I just would have preferred a more action-driven game. Of course, this is a LEGO game, and like every other version of the game, it's pretty easy. But that makes it great for kids, or for someone who's not looking for a too demanding title. Just don't expect playing this with your friends, as the DS version has no co-op. That blows. <laughs> Graphically, the game is solid, but nothing spectacular. 
game has adopted a top down view, and whilst this does help with the touchscreen controls, it does make the visuals seem less impressive. You'll notice a plethora of potter tunes here, and I'm sure you'll be familiar with them, and all those LEGO sound effects you've heard a dozen times before are here. You will notice pixelation and quality loss during the cutscenes, however, and the music isn't of a higher quality as it could be. Ha ha! So, another multi-platform game for the DS, should you bother with this or stick with a home console release? Well, LEGO Harry Potter for the DS isn't a bad game, but the lack of multiplayer, the weaker experience of the story, and obviously the poorer visuals make this a wiser purchase for a PS3 or 360. And even if you don't have a PS3 or 360, the game just feels too similar to the far superior Zelda DS games. Because of this, I can only recommend this game as a rental to those LEGO fanatics out there whose only console is their DS.